wow. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I want to share with you my results from two weeks of practicing with Florentino. But first I got two announcements. One, I tried streaming for the first time this past Thursday. I had so much support from my friends and family and I was really really thankful for that. We played some fun games with people from the chat and also met some new people. I've decided that uh, I will be streaming Thursdays at 5pm so please come and check me out. Next, I want to promote my tournament. Uh, I'm running an esports team called Anaspira with my, well, I recruited all my siblings. And uh, we will be hosting a tournament in about two to three weeks time with a cash prize pool of $100 to $250. That's the idea. It's a modest incentive and, and my goal in the tournament is to host and give my team a legitimate competition as motivation to improve, as well as to get to know the community better. I put out a survey online to just gauge the interest level and I think the response has been very favorable. We've got interest from at least 3 to 4 teams already and if you haven't had a chance to take a look at this survey, please take a look at it from the description below and leave your email so I can send you automatically the official tournament registration link. This tournament is completely free and I want to welcome players of any competition level into our friendly competition. Alright, since the release of my Florentino Theory video, I've played 29 games at the Silver 2 and the Vet 3 ELOs. Today I'm going to talk about the build, how having not enough damage is really awkward for me, and so what did I do to change it up, the importance of the ultimate during tower dives, the problems of minions versus hero targeting, then I will wrap up with a couple of things I think I can still improve on. I've got a game for us to watch, but first I want to quantify my progress a bit. My first jungle clear with Florentino has been improved by 10 seconds, and another improvement is my KDA has been steadily becoming positive. I still average around 4 deaths per game though. I've also reproduced some classical, you know, Florentino plays. I'll highlight a couple now just to put a name to each of the plays. This first one is level 2 solo kill. The next one is a solo outer tower dive. And surviving, of course, after that, you know. Followed by a Dark Breakers Oof Over Extended kind of kill. I don't know if I can do his accent, right? But do we get it? Yes, we do. And finally, two heads up and ambush plays like this one. This one is particularly important to me because it means that I'm getting proficient enough at my combos to be able to now pay attention to the minimap. I chose the following game to show you guys today because my KDA in this game was just really good. And we do lose, but oh well. Let's talk about the build. As a Slayer laner, I'm taking Flicker, build boots, and then going to Fenrir's Tooth right away. This is because I think it's super awkward to not have enough damage and then getting outplayed by something like this Ardrin right here. Keeping this in mind, I'm going to start Mr. Stabby if I'm a jungler to get that jump start and damage at the early game. Actually, my philosophy about Florentino is going to be the same with Yena, is that I just want enough damage to do what I need to do, and then I'm going to put the rest of my money into tank items to survive the fights. For me, it's easier to start without any tank items and focus on building my attack items, because I think it's easier to notice when you're about to die, and maybe use your ultimate and flicker to flee rather than overestimating yourself and end up committing to a losing fight. As you saw though, I don't have my full arcana so maybe once I do get the full arcana I'll feel a little bit differently about my choices. Recently I've heard a new line of thought about Florentino that doesn't focus on trying to beat the opponent uh, in the slayer lane to level 2. So some, you know, previously people would say, oh, uh, try to get your wave clear as fast as possible and then you can use your level 2 to kill people. Um, but I feel right now I just cannot trade as well against most Slayer laners. Like right now I got pretty beaten up by this Maloc and thanks for the early gank though, we got the nice first blood over here. So I came over here to steal the small camp and the idea is to use my lunge steps which is the enhanced normal attacks after catching a flower. But I think watching it back it doesn't actually work on non-hero targets. You can see now as I hit the butterfly, I get 115 in the green. That means I got the regen, but previously I did not see that number. 
And for those of you who doesn't know, the 267 that I get as regen when Butterfly died is part of the enchantment. The next couple of plays here are going to be very exciting. I catch an opportunity up top to duel this Maloc, and with his first ability and his life stealing attacks, he's actually getting the upper hand in terms of HP. But that's giving him the false confidence now to continue fighting. It seems as though I'm very good at dodging his first ability shots, but <laughs> I was really just focused on getting to my flowers on time. That's gonna be a solo kill for me because I ended that fight just before Butterfly could get here. We're now going to invade their red buff because, well, the Slayer lane is dead and so probably only the enemy jungler is gonna defend. I jump on this jungler immediately to let Butterfly get the red buff, but Butterfly decides to help me kill the enemy Butterfly instead, so I ended up getting even a red buff for this. 309 health points back into the bank. Wonderful. At this point of the match though, I didn't understand that I can't get um, regen every lunch, so, so I ended up spending all of that 309 points back to killing this small camp. It gave me an opportunity to flank this Maloc though. I was so close to being able to kill this Maloc, but I missed the flower toss and now I'm really in trouble. Butterfly is chasing me, my flicker isn't enough. This is the moment I practiced for. A2, A2, and yes, the knockup is just enough to keep the butterfly in the range of the tower, and I get the awesome outplay kill. Once again, that was the lunge step giving me the extra bit of heal to stay alive. And it really wouldn't have happened if we used the 2A kind of combo rather than the A2 combo. You know, so far rather than fossil. The sofa saved my ass, and it kind of fits that way because, you know, sofas are meant to be sat on, right? <laughs> the next time I'm back in lane, I find this Maloc overextended with our scud, and I think we can dive this. Yes, we get him. Very good. It's a really good time for me to talk about the importance of the ultimate during the tower dive. I'm actually inclined to rely on combos that can be repeated without a massive cooldown in between. I find this very attractive because I don't want to be locked down by a precondition and I want to be proactive and engage anytime on demand. Yeah, yeah, quite a naive mindset because we have to know that heroes are balanced in AOV and so they always have conditions for their engagements. So let's check out why ultimate is so important during a tower dive. The ultimate actually gives you double the life steal on the lunge step. With the Fenrir's Tooth end at level 15, this is the difference between 400 per lunge and almost 900 per lunge depending on the kind of enchantments you are carrying. In this final example, I used Flicker 1 to bloom my flowers and I could not survive the dive. These examples were picked out from other games, so let's return to our game now. I led my ultimate onto the Maganga, which is fantastic because he doesn't have any CC and I can be immune to all other CC from other players. Watching this fight back in slow motion, I think I have an opportunity to do a bit more if I just catch the top flower and go after the Maganga. In terms of gold here though, Zill with 4,000 gold, 2,000 gold lead on top of everyone else, that was a surprise to find out. Since there's a 2 on 1 on the top lane, I decided to come dive this Maganga. I didn't use my ultimate, and as you can see, yeah, I ended up being poked down really low and have to recall. I'm gonna get quite a few chances to play with this Maganga. And I think Maganga is one of the heroes I don't really like to go against as a Florentino. Somehow he just pokes me down so much and every time I engage him it seems like I have to recall. Check this out. I threw my flower onto the wave because I was intending to clear it, but since he's close, I ended up attacking him instead. With my ultimate, I'm doing 705-706 HP regeneration, which saved me from his ultimate blast, but again, I am one bar of health left and I have to recall. At this point in the game, I only have a little bit of magic resistance from the Gilded Greaves, so it does make sense why I'm getting poked out so much by Maganga. A Matlock on 1000 hit points, this is a matter of a lunge step and two to finish the job. 
I think over here chasing down this butterfly, I could have probably used Flicker and 3 instead. Maybe that would spawn the flowers right away. It is not a big deal though, because I wouldn't have needed the flowers anyway to kill the butterfly. Over here we are now engaging the Maganga once more, but I missed the flowers to secure the kill and I thought about running away, but that burn damage is going to take me out if I don't get the extra bit of HP regen from the enchantment. So I had to go back and just make the kill. With my KDA at 9, 0, and 2, this is by far the best game I've had ever with Florentino. But <laughs> I thought I was having a good game, but look at this Zill, 7.2k gold already. He's probably still in this left bush, so I tried to engage him, but he actually jumps away instead of trying to engage on me. I thought about engaging the situation up here. Maybe if it was only the Malak and the Valheim, maybe I could have, but with Zill in the mix, I didn't even have much of the magic defense up yet, so the only thing I could do was run. With 3 top, this Maganga is terribly out of position. However, I miss catching my last flower and I don't get the extra lunge step. And there goes my killing spree. There's only a couple of notable plays left to talk about. Here I let the butterfly jump onto the Valheim first because he has more HP than I. But I end up missing my ultimate which is really too bad. I had flicker available so I could flicker in to just gap close and then do a point blank kind of. That would probably work out better. I'm itching to take the Zill on, but as soon as I release that Blossom, he used his ultimate to dodge my Blossom. That was well played by him. In his next fight over here, I spot a really low blood Maganga. I really wanted to take him out. I thought I'm just going to be able to move up like with a 3, there you go, and then 2, but I don't really know what's happened. Let's watch that in slow motion. It's hard for me to admit, but after my ultimate, there's just this one second of lag time where I'm not even putting any input. I could have just normal attack and then immediately use my 2, I guess, but that was a bit embarrassing. I didn't end up being able to chase down this Zill at all or getting a kill on him. He was just untouchable. You'll notice actually I picked up the Curse of Death because I was dealing with a Maganga. That was my thought anyway. Hmm, not sure if that's gonna really work. I didn't really feel it, I guess. I did only buy it at the very last fight, so wasn't able to test it out properly. Maybe in the next game I'll be able to check it out a little bit more. Okay, I'll now talk about one other issue I've encountered and then finally wrap it up with some of that. My next steps to improve the Florentino gameplay. The issue I'm going to talk about is one about auto attack getting locked onto a hero who is outside of your range. Here I catch my first flower and I'm spamming the attack the hero button and then I actually use my skill 2 to try to hit that minion. What I should have done is probably auto attack the minion right away to slingshot myself towards Lorio. The other thing I really need to improve on is fixing my habit to lift my left thumb during hero engagement. It's a part of my subconscious right now and from our previous experiment, it, it is the case that this will slow down our combo by about 0.3 or more seconds. In a real fight, this could mean life and death, like now. I mean, the worst case scenario is that a CC stops me from getting my flower and then, well, this kind of thing happens, like I can't finish my opponent. Here's the perfect example. So as I normal attack after the first flower, I'm gonna pick up my thumb, just like that. And actually, when I cast my second ability, I already flick my thumb towards the top left corner and I end up not being able to reach my second flower. That proved critical because I'm not able to kill Batman and he lands his Batman orang on me and I end up dying. It is also the case that I have to practice a little bit more on the accuracy of my flower pickups. So here, I think I can actually kill this Lubu again, but after my first flower, I miss my second flower and get across the wall instead of to the flower. And yeah, you see during this gameplay too that I missed black flowers a little bit too much during the engagement, which is super deadly. I think I will also maybe improve my build just a bit more. The enchantment could be swapped out for the Desperate Duel one instead of the, I think it's called the Curse of Death. Um, because I don't really know how to gauge the explosion dealt by the Curse of Death, so usually I try to make the killing blow anyways. 
and I find that I usually have to use two blossoms to make a kill on tanks anyway. So the number of consecutive hits and the buffs that Desperate Duel can give me should synergize quite nicely with Florentino. I can now understand why the top players on the NA server choose to use this enchantment. So yeah, that's my report on my Florentino progress. Oh, right. One thing I'll be take note about Florentino is uh, I do hate playing against Alan, Omen, and sometimes Magaga. Like, check out this Alan. Uh, his blood is not dropping and mine is just dropping like crazy. Ugh, this is level one. What should my next video be about, guys? If you have any ideas, comment down below. And if you also haven't filled out the tournament survey, please do. Uh, there's gonna be prize money and real competition to be had. Like, subscribe, and share my video to more friends so we can all play AOV together. I hope you've been enjoying these clips playing in the background just now of the other games I've had. I'm gonna sign off, but just leave the videos playing for your enjoyment. See you on stream this Thursday! Kill. I wear a fedora, but I have a 